Let's go. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's uh, me, uh, the Ninja Reviewer here, and it's time once again for that magical time of the week or weekend for ponies and not to mention the movie is coming out way later which is friendship games it's coming out eight o'clock unfortunately sucks for me i don't have the channel i'm gonna see hopefully if i can try to do something at least by that time to maybe if someone has like a live stream going if someone does have the channel let me know and i can join in or if not i'll just wait until after the movie premieres there'll be some kind of link and i can watch the movie because as you all know, I don't have the Hub channel anymore, so that kind of sucks. Plus, it's extra money to pay for it. Plus, the only thing I'm going to watch is MLP anyway. Why would I even want to do that? So, but don't worry, though. When it comes to the season, I will get it when I get the season set through support, at least. So, anyways, yeah. So, episode 16, Made in Manhattan. This episode, I'm not going to lie, I didn't have my highest expectations for this episode, but to be fair, it wasn't a horrible episode either. I mean, by, by all means. Oh, dear God, it's not. It's not a really bad episode. But when it comes to a Manhattan episode, I expected something better. Kind of, I mean, I hate to say this, but I think Rarity Takes Manhattan was just a bit better. Like, when it comes to, like... Well, I don't know. I mean, to me... Nah, actually, no, scratch that. They were sort of, like, on that same level, but... This I kind of liked more better because they had some pretty cool moments, especially at the beginning and the middle portions. Like, there were some really funny moments and some really awesome scenery moments. Oh, by the way. <laughs> Yo! I almost forgot. There's an Easter egg. Now, watching the episode, like, I didn't really want to watch the episode twice, but I looked at Tumblr and I realized, wait, are you serious? That pony returns back. Oh my god, that makes the episode redeemable now. Fuck, no, no, no. It has to make this episode redeemable now. But no, I don't even think the fat pony came inside. Because it was just a quick Easter egg. It wasn't like a big scene or a little scene. It was like a really quick scene. It's an Easter egg that you have to catch. So I guess not even the fat uh, obesity pony or freak of nature or whatever god celestia that is. Can't even save this episode. But regardless, though, I'll get to just... It's very simple, very basic. Basically, well, it's canon-related because it is a map episode. Yay! Since we haven't seen that thing since the fucking Griffin Empire. Seriously. So, we do have Applejack and Rarity getting this mission that they have to solve a friendship problem in Manhattan. It's a specific part in Manhattan where it's kind of like the busiest of all busiest sections where, you know, you got massive traffic, you know, just like New York City. Okay, I'm not trying to offend New York or anything, but I'm not really the biggest city person either. I mean, if anything, I'd rather just do transportation, but when it comes to driving, hell no. And I can kind of feel with Applejack because I'm more of a civilized, more country, cul-de-sac kind of person. I'm not really a big city guy. Who likes to travel in the city lots of dangerous things you never know what kind of people can you meet at that city so i kind of feel with applejack i wasn't really on the ride either when it comes to going to the city but whatever though the city is nice and beautiful but i would never live there just to visit there you know that's just my thing i j i'd rather visit the city than just like you know actually live there because there is no way i could survive in the big city hell no that again you can make mad money off of the city but I'm good. So anyways, we find out that Twilight, at the very beginning of the episode, is bored out of her misery by reading the same old books that she got. That's kind of like me in that situation, where I kind of read some of the same either mangas, or if I've seen this anime already, it's like, you know, I want to do something outside besides reading the same old stuff over and over. Regardless, it's still epic as hell, but, you know, I'd rather do something else besides just doing all this stuff, like over and over and over again, but if I had to do something exciting, something interesting, like if it's like a slow day and there's nothing to do, yeah, I feel you, kind of like a Sunday, how like there's really not that much to do, even though I kind of work on Sundays, but you know, back in the day when I didn't actually, you know, work on a Sunday or whatever, it was basically, I didn't really do much, just having the same old games, same old manga, same old books, 
uh, DVDs, whatever, and it's like, uh, it's like, I really just want to do something else, something exciting, and I really felt bad for Twilight that she couldn't really get to go with them to Manhattan, but it was just Rarity and Applejack's mission after all, just saying. So, the next key portion is that now that they got their mission, and I really do feel bad for Twilight, that's kind of like me on certain daily basis when I'm bored, so... Or if I just want to have someone talk to me or something. It's like, ah, uh, like, I, what am I going to do? So, anyways, hold on here. They're going on their way to Manhattan. We have Rarity and Applejack as their own two-episode partner up once again. This is, I believe, the third time that they are partner up together. Because the first time we had Look Before You Sleep. And then the second one we had was the uh, one with the Trade Yet episode, I believe it was. Where... They had all these different sad stories of them trading stuff when we had Applejack and Rarity doing some kind of, like, negotiation of training. But I guess, you know, at the very end, once they worked everything out, once one person took care of whichever, and one person took care of that to help out a friend, and actually understand, like, the importance of working together with someone, even though, you know, you may not have the same qualities of that person, but each one of you is unique. So if you work together as a team from your own uniqueness, you can create something special for someone else. So I think from my understanding that's what the lesson is, but not entirely so sure. So anyways, we're finally in Manhattan. It's really funny how Applejack can't really cross the street for anything. And I agree, because I'm afraid to cross the city streets myself. So we see Applejack, and she's pretty much trying to play a game of Frogger trying to cross the street, and it's funny too, she's like, she's like ready to go, like she's pumped up and shit, and she tries to go in like a, like a rodeo, and she's trying to like dodge all the cars, which I thought was actually pretty funny, I'm not gonna lie, so we got that part out of the way, so we find out that while Rarity was trying to actually smuggle someone from getting sold by a rigged hat, um, apparently she thought that wasn't really the friendship thing, by the way, I like the reference to Charlie Brown, by the way, when she opens up like a friendship problem thing like a stand and then she's like standing like this and she's saying good grief and i'm like we all knew that charlie brown pretty much came to mind when it comes to that like scenario so that was a pretty nice reference you know right there for that oh and the eyebrow the eyebrow was back and it made a sound effect man that's crazy i love it i love the eyebrow that shit was funny as hell not to mention it made a sound when we first saw it it made no sound this time around, it had a sound effect, and I loved it. It was just so goddamn funny. Um, the second thing, is, the most important thing, that we get a returning pony from last season, um, which is uh, Coco Pimel. And Coco Pimel is having trouble trying to revive this theater that she used to be so passionate about years ago, but ever since they tore down the old theater, the city hasn't really been itself. It's been more of too busy hassle, thinking of everybody else, you know, as thinking for themselves and not really caring about the consideration of others. They're just there just to make a busy, busy business and stuff like that. So it turns out they want to help Coco uh, Pamel revive this theater. So they ask all these like uh, city ponies to help them out. But unfortunately, you know, it didn't really work out. Some of them weren't cooperating. So, yeah. And by the way, did you catch the one pony that kind of sounded like Slappy the Squirrel from Animaniacs? I think it was the... Uh, the old, uh, the old, uh, the old granny, I think, crossing the street, I think it was. And I think there is another one that kind of sounds like your typical, like, uh, I don't know. See, uh, hold on a second. Basically, when they actually get there, they see the theater is a wreck. Applejack pretty much has to go out there and help out the situation and try to fix up the theater. But Rarity has to set up all the costumes, get out the invitations to all the actual theatrical actors. Unfortunately, the studio is still sort of like a mess, while Applejack's still trying to fix it. Because she's not really cut out uh, for doing that kind of work as much. Because they need some more ponies, more working ponies to actually make it better. One pony isn't really just going to do it, Sally, to be honest. So we find out that while the theater is in wreck, they decided to keep it plain and simple by creating something that's not really too big or too fancy, but at least it will get the crowd's attention. So at the end of the episode, we do see that the crowd is actually really loving it. You know, by the way, this one pony crowd with a mother and child kind of reminds me of someone you would see in Harlem. I'm not racist against Harlem or anything. I'm just saying, hey, I'm Puerto Rican myself. Don't get me wrong. I'm half Puerto Rican, Irish, and Italian. So you're talking to like three nationalities of one here, people. So 
I'm Puerto Rican myself, and she kind of sounds a bit like this might be the first Hispanic pony we might actually have here in the world of MLP, which is uh, kind of cool, I guess. So we see them that they're actually enjoying the presentation of the reviving the old theater. So now at the very end, since it was a big success and everyone saw it at the city, they decided to actually reopen it thanks to Coco Pamel's vision and Applejack and Barity's assistance with the costumes and the hard work. So Applejack pretty much explains to that one top hat pony that sounds like your typical New York sales businessman, pretty much says that in the busier times, they were always so busy and so out of focus to create something that everyone can enjoy and be happy to live in the big city. Unfortunately, now, well now, pretty much now, that, you know, they got this set up, and while the park is not in the best condition, he's still going to try to work his best to motivate the guy to actually get more working ponies to make the park nice, safe, and fresh, maybe hopefully we build a bigger theater for Coco Pamel and her theater group. So, yeah, I think it will pretty much, you know, lead up to something big in the future. Who knows? Maybe it'll be a little cameo thing setting up for when Season 5 is about to end or something like that. So it turns out that Rarity and Applejack learn, you know, well, I don't really think there was any kind of, any sort of lesson that was the most important thing in this episode. Basically, you know, you got two ponies that, you know, even though they aren't really the same kind of, you know, people that think alike, they pretty much, the, uh, you know, as long as you actually work together and actually, you know, get your, um, your, um, your creativity aside, like, you know, like, you got your, you know, you got what makes you and what makes her, you know, put those together, and you can create something that will be enjoyable for everyone, which I think is pretty much the lesson that we're seeing here. I don't know. Let me know exactly, because I'm not really technically so sure what kind of lesson they were trying to prove at the end, but, meh. So the episode itself was just okay. I could have given it an okay, okay, okay plus episode. Uh, nothing too spectacular. For a map episode, I expected better. I would say um, the Lost Tre the Lost Empire of Griffinstone, I believe it was called, that episode was a lot better than this one because I like the exploration. I like that we're actually going to a new location. And hell, even the Yakistan episode was better because there were actually new locations. Here, we're just going back to the same old location except just the busier part of the city. And that's, you know, really it, Sally. So... Hopefully, the last uh, map episode, which we all know is probably going to be Twilight and Fluttershy. Hopefully, those will probably be the last two that they're going to need for the map episode, which I'm pretty sure that will be the last one. I mean, as a, as, as a tag team duel, maybe. If not, I don't know if we're ever going to see the map again. But maybe we will see it one last time because we had uh, Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash. We had Verity and Applejack. And now it makes perfect sense that the last two teams to go on an adventure from the map would be Twilight and Fluttershy, which would make more sense. But from seeing the episodes that we're getting next month in October, I don't really see that happening now. Maybe the last month in November we'll get something like episode 22 or maybe episode 23 possibility. We'll get that. Episode 24, I highly doubt it because I think it's a different episode, especially... Comic-Con sort of had an animatic about it, so I really doubt it's episode 24, so yeah, I highly doubt it. I think it's going to be, uh, eh, I think it's probably going to be one of those episodes, but who knows, we'll see. So overall, it was an okay episode, nothing too spectacular, um, well actually no, to be perfectly honest, even though it was an okay episode, uh, there were, actually no. Forget that. There were actually some pretty funny moments at the beginning, like Twilight being bored. I like how um, Applejack... Oh, and Applejack's hat. Rest in pepperoni. Applejack's hat. Rest in pepperoni. But, you see, there were actually some memorable moments that were kind of funny. And you know what? I'll be a little bit nice. I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5. I'll give it, like, a decent, decent plus episode. Nothing like a crazy or brilliant, but it was a decent episode uh, regardless. And by the way, those... Um, Full shots of Coco Pamel. I, I I pray for sympathy for those who died of diabetes and heart attack from those cute little adorable goddamn photos. They were just so cute. So yeah, you know what? There were some things in this episode that 
actually did make this episode quite memorable. I mean, again, it's not Appaloosa's Most Wanted, which it was completely boring and nothing really as much happened and it wasn't interesting in the slightest and it was like, meh. But this one, there actually was some stuff going on. It wasn't brilliant, but I guess I'll give it a decent. I'll give it a passing grade, I guess. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What did you guys think of the episode? Uh, did you like the duel between Rarity and Applejack? Which I thought they kind of worked all right, I guess. I mean... I think this was the best episode that they kind of actually worked together compared to, I guess, other episodes. This, is, I think, was the only good one that they kind of worked together as. So, yeah, 3.5 out of 5, a.k.a. decent, decent plus episode. So, yeah, that's pretty much my overall thoughts. Stay tuned. Well, I don't know about later on. Maybe tomorrow or something. I'll try to review uh, Friendship Games. I haven't watched it yet. I know Canada got it early. I know those... Those Canadians got it earlier before us as a stream. So I don't know if someone will post it earlier, but who knows how it'll work out. If not, I guess I just got to wait until the rest of the world gets it. But anyways, hope you guys are hyped for that. I've heard a lot of mixed feelings from people about it already. So we'll see how it goes tonight. Maybe hopefully Friendship Games will be even better. But anyways, that's all i got to say. This is the Ninja Reviewer signing out. Peace. And manga fans, keep supporting what you read, what you watch, and bronies. Bro who burning on. I know this review was supposed to be shorter, but there was just actually some mixed feelings and things I wanted to get out of the way about the episode. A after realizing it, it was a pretty decent episode, even though it could have been better, but eh, what do you expect? So, yeah. So, stay tuned. Well, for the episode viewers, Bro Hoof to the Bronies, I'll see you guys that time or next week for episode... Uh, 17, which I think is a sister brotherhood thing. Oh, yeah, one more thing. I forgot to mention about that. Apparently, they missed out the sister brotherhood thing with Sweetie Belle and Apple Bloom. So, I think that's going to be the next episode coming up. Now, that might actually beat this episode by a long side. Oh, and praise, praise the goddess Celestia. This is the last rarity episode. Yes, thank you. So, next month, we're going to get regular episodes. Yes, I, I'm done. Thank Celestia Faust for blessing us with no more Rarity episodes. Please don't give us any more until next season. The month of Rarity was kind of fine, but let's just, you know, move on already from this and get back to the regular episode train. Thank you. So we're done. See you guys later. Peace.